Well, hello. I'd like to talk about making flash photography with the Pentax 6x7 camera. This is the outfit I'm using. And I have been successful. This is a page of uh, photographs I just took last night. I've taken other photographs too, but this time I figured out exactly how much to set this and that for whatever combination of things I'm using. If I bounce flash, I estimate the distance a little further and then I add one and a half to two stops to get the negative the way I like it. Alright, first the camera. This is a Pentax 6x7. I have a Vivitar 2800 flash on it. I got that from my old 35mm outfit from the 70s. It still works. I have a 90mm leaf shutter lens on the camera. This allows me to use the shutter on the lens at speeds faster than the camera sync of 1 30th of a second. I have a 2x rear teleconverter behind the lens. This makes the focal length 180 millimeters. Now at 9 feet away from a subject I can get a tight head shot. Otherwise I'd have to move into 4 or 5 feet with the 90 millimeter to get a tight head shot and you're right in somebody's face then the flash is right in their face so I wanted a longer lens. In order to see what I'm doing I'm using the chimney viewfinder on the camera. I wear glasses my eyes aren't really bad but things at a distance are a little blurry. In low light it's impossible to focus a uh, pentaprism viewfinder even with the two and a half power magnifier. Now if there's a little bit of light I could do it fine but if I put the 165 millimeter f2.8 lens on it, no, don't work. Not in dim light. The chimney finder works and the waist level viewfinder works. They both work. Alright. I want to show you what I'm using. So first I take off the lens because I want to take off the viewfinder. I had to use a piece of tape to secure this mask on the top of the viewfinder. It fits perfectly and it doesn't wiggle but when you put this on this rides above it and then this jumps out of place. So you have to tape the finder uh, the viewfinder mask in place. What this is this is a viewfinder mask so that I could use 35 millimeter film in the 120 camera. This gives me more shots to experiment with exposure settings and I don't waste a lot of film. Alright, now you take the lens off, then the viewfinder, then this little button on the chain slides all the way over. Then you put the viewfinder back on, click click, and then you put the lens back on. This turns that little button and it pulls it back up. If you don't do it in that order, you could break that chain. You plug the flash PC socket into the PC socket of the lens. This lens has another fitting. It's for a cable release. That only works if you're doing double exposures and in that case you would set this thing underneath the lens to S for special. 
we're not using that. We're using it at U. So set this thing for the 90 millimeter leaf shutter lens on U and set the camera speed on 8. That's 1 eighth of a second. And like I said, plug the flash into the lens. Now the way this works is complicated. I never understood flash photography. And I bought this a long time ago. So, let me walk you through it. Here are the instructions from long ago. They're very light gray. This half is in English. So this was difficult for me to read. And I didn't want to use my magnifying glass. It's a little dizzy. So I scanned this. And I made it nice and big and black. Well, it's not black. It's still gray. But it's big, and I can read it. Some of the pages are getting to be nice and dark. Bounce flash in auto mode. Okay, now I can read it. So I studied it, and I read it, and read it, and read it. it started to make sense. I tried different things, and I started to have some success. Took a lot of notes, and uh, made reports and eventually figured it out. And last night it all came together. So as a review, perhaps this video is only to remind myself, the way to use the flash, one way is in automatic. In automatic you set this little button to red or blue. Blue is for closer and red is for far away. The blue scale goes from 3 feet to 20 feet, and the red scale goes from, what, 6 feet to 40 feet. On the back of the flash is this little slider. You set the slider to the ISO of the film you're using. So I was using 400 ISO film. Here's the ISO on top. So you set the little line under the 400. This line on the button that slides goes underneath the 400. Now with blue, you look at the blue line that goes over and then it goes up and there's a little dot. The number that's above that in the sliding scale is what you set your lens to. So for blue, that would be F8. So you set your lens to F8. This to blue. No panel in here. Straight at the subject. The shutter speed on 8. And you can use whatever shutter speed you want here. You take your picture. You have to turn on the flash. And then this light will come on when it's ready to fire. There it goes. If you want to test it, you push this red button here. And this green will flash if the exposure is correct. Okay, the light goes out, it bounces off the subject, it goes into this little eye in the front of the camera and tells you at F8 I can adjust your exposure to give you a perfectly exposed picture. All the negatives come out pretty much the same when you do it right. If something is further away, okay, then you set the automatic exposure to red, and you look at the end of the red line, you go up to the dot, and there it says 4. So you set your lens at f4. On this 90 millimeter lens, it goes down to f2.8. That's one stop lower than 4. The dot is 4, and then there's a half stop between it and 5.6. So the dot is f4. That's what you set your lens at. 
and pretty much everything turns out all right if you're straight at it. Okay? But you get that flash shadow beside the subject. All right, so now I'm going to turn this off. It has an automatic off. And all you have to do is turn it off and turn it on again to reset it. But I'm turning it off in between. Okay, so that's the automatic settings. The flash duration is from what? Uh, one tooth. Let me, let me check the specs. The flash duration is from one two thousandth of a second to one thirty thousandth of a second. And the flash on automatic will look at the light that comes bouncing back from your subject and it will adjust the duration of the flash between one two thousandth and one thirty thousandth of a second. Now that's so short that it doesn't matter what you set the lens speed to, okay, a two thousandth of a second is four times faster than one five hundredth, so that light gets in there no matter what. And all my shots have turned out no matter what I set the shutter speed to. The shutter speed allows you to hand hold the camera, and you should have more shutter speed number than you have focal length of lens. So this is 180, so you have to use a 250th of a second or a 500th to hand hold it. That also will help with the mirror slap. But what you're getting is the mirror will open, the mirror will lift, this shutter will fire, the mirror will close. So your picture happens after the mirror already opens up. The other way to use the flash is on manual. That's in the middle. That gives you a constant flash exposure. But what you do is you control the amount of light that hits your film by adjusting the aperture. Now you focus the camera on the subject, and I'm about seven feet away. So on the scale it says seven. I find the distance in feet in that middle range on the bottom scale. It says feet and meters. So meters is on the bottom and then feet is above it. And that sliding scale with the blue and the black is above it. So feet and meters, seven, that's on 400. Seven isn't even on the scale. It's above 16. So you would set it on F22. Or to get just a little more light, set it on F16. And on manual, that'll give you a fairly light negative. Bang, take your picture. The auto check will not work on manual. So you can bracket, open it up to F11, take another picture. That's how you use manual. The light level is always the same, but you adjust the amount of light by adjusting the aperture according to the distance. So it's two ways of shooting. Another way of shooting is with the bounce flash. This head doesn't swivel, but it does go up and down. This room has a nice smooth white plaster ceiling with no obstructions. Between me and the subject, it tape measures about 12 feet from a 45 degree angle over. The subject is um, seven or eight feet away and I used 15 feet which is a little bit more on the distance scale and I had f11. Then I bracketed and I got a lot of pictures that came out some were lighter some were darker. You have to experiment but that's the way it works. One other thing the 2x teleconverter takes two stops of light. So before you even start, you have to move this white line under the 400, down to the 2, down to the 1. Now you're ready to take pictures, and they all turned out right. Okay? 
by adjusting this, you don't change the light or the aperture or anything. All this gives you are different numbers to tell you what to do. I don't think this connects electronically to anything. But the blue scale now is on F4, and the red scale, which we can't use, is on F2. That's too small. This lens only goes to 2.8. The 156, 165 F2.4 lens goes half stop more, but not down to F2. You'd have to use the old 35 millimeter lens for that. That goes down to 1.4. Nice. All right. Mm, mm, mm. You could use a wide angle panel. There are other ones that have color. I don't use them. The wide angle panel will diffuse the light somewhat and spread it out some. If you use that panel, then you use this dot that's next to the line and put it underneath the 100. Now you have F2.8 on blue for the automatic setting. And at 15 feet away, if you use manual, you've got F4. So you have slightly more depth of field. Take the panel off for more depth of field. Slide this over. And now at 15 feet, you've got F5.6. So now you have more depth of field when you focus. When I made my shots, I focused on a statue that's behind the camera. And I used this big flashlight, torch, and I shined it on the face of the statue. I looked through the chimney finder and I focused the camera on the closest eye. And my focus is dead on. I did that for every shot. Only one shot did I stand up and handhold the camera to take it, but I had it at 1 250th, and that worked also as just as steady as when I had the camera braced on my lap and I took the shot like that. So that really helps. The flashlight really, really helps. If the depth of field at f5.6 isn't enough, then you could use a higher ISO film. You could push the film to 1600 or 3200. It's Tri-X. You can do that. And, you know, then you would overcome the light loss from the teleconverter. Remember, the teleconverter is necessary to get close enough to get a big headshot on medium format film without getting in the, somebody's face, right in their space. Okay, so no panel. Use it straight, no bounce, and you get the, great, the smallest iris opening to get the greatest depth of field and focus with the flashlight. And if you, I haven't done this experiment yet, but uh, you could go ahead and shoot normally at 400, but push it to 16, develop it longer, and you'll get more shadow detail. And uh, you could use smaller apertures if you could figure out how to use the sliding scale. This scale goes up to 1,000. It doesn't go up to 16. So you can set it at 1,000 and just use it that way anyway. Just develop it longer. You can't uh, push the film one stop. They don't give you a number to push the film one stop. You, ha you have to push it two stops. 400 to 16, 400, 816, push it two stops, then the instructions tell you what time to develop the film. So just, uh, just shoot it with more light and develop it longer and you could close your lens a couple stops and you'll get more depth of field. But that, that's, that's another experiment to do. I didn't do that. I, I shot at 400 without the panel. I used the line under the 400 and all the shots turned out great. Some more little light, some more little dark. I was right in the middle. It's perfect. Really don't need to go to 16 or 3200. This worked fine. 
I developed it for 10 minutes in D76 at a 1 to 1 dilution. One water, one developer at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. It worked great. The pre-rinse did not turn blue. I fixed it for 10 minutes. Stop after 30 seconds. I washed it for 30 minutes. There's no pink in the film. The film's real clear. I got the same kind of contrast in the lights and darks on the negative as I did with the Aristo 100 or 400 with the Arista. So I finally got the Triax to work. Now the thing that I've skipped is how to use the 35 millimeter film converter. I have this uh, eyeglass case that holds the pickup spool for 35 millimeter film. This spool was taken out of the film can. The big end goes down. The film stops short of the spool and then tape holds the film onto the spool. I put the film next to an empty backing paper of 120 film and where the start arrow was on the paper backing I scratched this mark and that's what I line up inside the camera. So what I do is I take the new film out of the box and I tape it to that leader without taking any of the film out of the can. This is the way the film is. So put the big end down, find the end of the film, overlap them, See, there's the light part and the dark part, the light part and the dark part. I overlap one or two holes of sprocket holes. I put a piece of tape here, here, and here. Scotch tape. And then I hold this like this and I roll the film back into the can. I pull the leader into the can. There it goes. You don't want to tape it like this because when that edge comes out it'll catch. And that may jam your film in the camera. Now that doesn't hurt the film, although you should probably do it in subdued light. Inside the camera is another mask that goes over the film gate and then there are these four metal nubs used as spacers for the 35 millimeter film. I already have the camera set to 220 here and I have it set here so the pressure plate and the film counter are both already set because I still had the viewfinder mask underneath the chimney. But you would change that after you open the door. So the door is open, now you could change the pressure plate, move it towards the lock for 220, then you turn this screw up to 220. Otherwise the film counter will stop advancing the film at 10 and then you lose four pictures, three or four pictures. On a 24 exposure roll you get 13 uh, pictures in this format 24 by 66. So this just drops in place no problem. The take up spool, let's say it's already attached to the film. You put the big one on top, you put the little one on the bottom, and you hold the two. I hold the flange and let my finger hold the big one in place. Then you unlock, turn, and 
pull out, rotate this, line it up with the take up gear, put it back in place. Yeah. That's tight. So it's ready to load into the camera. And you'll go three or four times and then it'll catch. You'll hear the film come out. It'll catch and then it'll stop winding on one or zero. It'll stop winding on zero. You push, you know, and you'll, you'll take your picture. To remove it, unlock, rotate, pull, hold the flanges, and it comes right out. And that usually happens. It happens to me a lot. So develop work procedures to try to avoid that. Because they're darn hard to find in the dark. And when you're all done shooting, you have to open the camera in the dark and remove the film can that has the film all pulled out and on the take-up reel. Now what I did last night was, I just, it was already all the way pulled out, but I took the can opener and I popped the top. And then I slid it up, and it was right there, and I just cut it. Then I loaded it into the Patterson reel, and it was done. I was ready to process. I could turn on the lights and then put the camera back together. Otherwise, if you're going to do it later, then you just wind all of it back into the can. Then, then you could stick it in your pocket and go home and do it. I, I've been doing this at home. I've wound it up and done it that way also. But when you wind it up, it has to be in total darkness. So you could use a film changing bag. You could leave it in the camera till you get home. But if you want to change films, okay, you're going to need a changing bag if you don't have a dark room. So wind up the film into the can, take off the leader, wind the nub back inside, and load your next roll. With a 36 exposure roll, you'll get 19 shots. Now they're half height. They're not 6 by 7. Okay. Um, they're what? 3.5 by 7. They're 24 by 66. And that's about it. I like to pull the tab down before I close the door. This will not advance unless you have the caulk and key. Do not turn this unless you have the door open. I focus the chimney with my glasses so that I can leave the glasses on and see all the other numbers. I need the bifocals to see up close. My eyeglasses do not touch the lens. This rubber thing does not come off. It works great. I can see to compose very nicely. This is nice and bright. I can focus in dim light. That's about it. I encourage you to buy a Pentax 6x7 35mm panoramic conversion kit. Do a search on the words conversion kit and you'll find it. They're only 50 bucks or so. Not bad. And you could shoot a lot more than 10 pictures that way. You get 19 on a 36 roll, you get 13 on a 24 roll. If you use the leader. If you don't, just use the 36 film without adding leader, okay, and you'll probably get the 13 shots because pulling it over, 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 you're going to waste all that film. It's convenient though.
But the whole point of doing it is to save film. I mean, is to have more pictures.